Hello everyone, my name is Brooke and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video for you that was actually requested by one of you guys. So if you ever have a video that you want to request that I do, make sure you just comment it somewhere, message me, something like that, and I will probably do it for you. Today's video was requested to do Disney tips and tricks for first timers. So these are people that have never been to Disney World before or maybe you haven't been in a really long time. Um, stuff has changed so much in Disney World over the last couple years. So I am here with some tips and tricks for you about how you can make the most out of your vacation. tips are mainly aimed at people who it is their first time in Disney World going on vacation. However, if you are on the Disney College program, these would also probably be applicable to you as well. Um, so these are just tips that I have found work for me. Each family does their vacation differently and what works for each family is a little bit different, but these are my best tips for you guys to make the most out of your stay. So my number one tip is something that a lot of people actually don't even realize they can do, and that is to book your fast passes and dining reservations in advance. If you are booking dining reservations, you can book those up to 180 days in advance and you can also cancel them up to 24 hours in advance. So if you book something 180 days and your plans change, you can either move that reservation or cancel it altogether without any sort of cancellation fee or anything. Um, so I highly recommend if you're just kind of even thinking about a reservation at a very popular restaurant that you book that right away. Restaurants like uh, Cinderella's Royal Table, Chef Mickey's, um, Le Cellier, I believe like the fancy ones, the Grand Floridian, like Victoria and Albert's. Um, there's a bunch of restaurants which book up super quickly. There are some that don't. A lot of times you can get reservations at certain restaurants um, within a week or so before your vacation, but a lot of the really popular ones that everyone wants to go to do book up that 180 days in advance, so it is super important. With your Fast Passes, if you're staying off-site, you can book them 30 days in advance. This is done through the My Disney Experience app. If you're staying on site, you can do it 60 days in advance. Once again, like the dining reservations, some fast passes go really, really quickly. If you want on Slinky Dog, Flight of Passage, um, Mine Train, definitely, any of the big ticket rides, um, you're definitely going to want to book those fast passes in as far advance as possible. My number two tip is to do your research. Um, this includes everything from looking at what attractions are in the theme parks to where you want to stay, where everything is around you, where you want to eat. Um, it's important to know what you want to do when you get down there because Disney World is so large. There is so much to do both on-site, off-site. There's Universal, there's SeaWorld, there's little attractions with in just like the Orlando Eye, you know, there's like little things everywhere. If you get down to Orlando and you have no idea what you want to do, you're going to spend so much time looking at maps and reading things and trying to figure out what you want to do that you're going to waste a lot of time on your vacation. So to get you excited for your vacation and also to do some research, it's a lot of fun to just go online, look up the different things that are available, come up with a little bit of a plan maybe, not necessarily being like we have to be here at this time and this time and this time, but more like a let's go to this park on this day and let's ride or try to ride these couple of rides. Um, this is what I want to do in this park. It's also great to know the height restrictions so you don't get your kids super hyped up for a ride if they can't ride it all of a sudden and that sucks. So it's important to do a little bit of research, find out what everything is and what you really want to do while you're down there. And this also does kind of go into my tip number three, which is make a plan and stick to it. I just mentioned a little bit about plans. It is super important to plan what you want to do. Um, my family usually does plan, we're gonna go to Epcot these days, Magic Kingdom these days, Animal Kingdom these days, we're gonna have a rest day here, um, just so that we know what's going on, what's happening, and then we also know that we're gonna be able to spread our time out between each park so that we have equal opportunity to go on the rides we want and do what we wanna do. This also actually really helps when we are booking our fast passes too. If we plan this out before we're able to book our fast passes or even our dining reservations, then we can strategically book those fast passes and dining reservations so they're at a time that suits us best. My tip number four is to get to the parks early. I cannot stress this enough. Mornings, yes, they're really early. They suck sometimes, especially if the parks open at 7 or 8 a.m., but 
Getting to the parks early is vital to getting on some of the rides. There are little to no waits for a lot of the rides early in the morning. You can go and you can walk on almost any ride you want. Additionally, this is a cooler part of the day. The parks are just not as crowded in general. I find that I can get on more rides in the morning, the first like two, three hours the park opens, than I can for the entire length of the afternoon. Just because the wait times are down, um, it's cooler outside, and honestly, I just love going to the parks in the mornings. Rope drop is my favorite. And this goes along with tip number five, which is to take a break. Um, I've been going to Disney World for quite a while now, ever since I was nine years old. And when I was nine years old, my family came up with this plan, sort of, which we did every single day, and it worked out beautifully. And we still use this exact plan today when we go to the parks. And it is, we wake up every morning for rope drop, nice, bright, and early. We spend the morning at the parks. Um, we usually have some sort of big buffet breakfast also, so tide us over for most of the day, but that is completely your choice. Um, but we spend the morning in the parks. We go back to the hotel where we're staying for the early to later part of the afternoon um, and this is because it's super hot so we either spend time at the pool or we take a nap if we're really tired um, and we just relax because the wait times are the longest in the middle of the afternoon it is the hottest out and the parks are the most crowded so by taking that time off you get a little bit of time to chill relax actually have like a bit of a vacation and then after dinner we usually eat an early dinner and then we go back to the parks to the, for the night we watch the fireworks we stay till park close and then we do the same thing Again the next morning. You are extremely tired after your Disney vacation, but honestly, everyone is. But you get the most, I find, out of the parks because the morning and the night is when they are the least crowded and when the temperatures are not searing hot. The next is a tip you just see a lot in the Facebook pages, and I think this is super important. And it is to not stuff stuff in your kids' shoes. I don't know, I've heard a lot of people talking about this recently, and I just think it's really important to mention. So height restrictions are on rides for a reason, and that reason is safety. Even if your kid is only an inch or half an inch under that height restriction, that height restriction is there for a reason. I think it's so important that we respect the height restrictions because they're there for a reason and if your kid gets hurt because you decided to stuff some paper or something in their shoes so they were tall enough, how bad are you going to feel about that? So just remember that is super important. Next is tip number seven which is off-site food is cheaper. If you are staying off-site, it is super easy to access off-site food. If you're staying on-site, it's a little bit harder. I know there are some, I believe it's Amazon, does a grocery delivery service. They can deliver directly to resort hotels. Um, even if you do not have a full kitchen, most resorts, I believe all of them, actually have a mini fridge in the room, which is great to store some snacks. You can even bring some snacks with you, um, or just ordering a case of water. Water on Disney property. One bottle of Dasani water, I believe, is now $4. A pop, I believe, is more than that. It's like six something or five something, I believe. They've raised the prices since I was there last. Um, the prices are ridiculous. Um, so make sure that you are bringing that food and water, not with you because a lot of people fly, but you're getting it from some other source. I know a lot of people saying on-site do not necessarily have a car. You could take Disney transportation to Disney Springs, take a very, very cheap Uber to a grocery store if you wanted, or just order it in. Like I said, if you're staying off-site, there are a ton of options for you as well. Um, overall, I just recommend you look a little bit into those just because it will save your family a ton of money, exception being if you maybe are on the dining plan. Additionally, if you don't want to get like a case of water or something, you could always bring refillable water bottles with you. There are water fountains in all the parks. They're not necessarily the coldest sometimes, um, but they are all around the parks that you could use as well. It is very important to stay hydrated in Florida. Tip number eight is that off-site souvenirs are also cheaper. There are a bunch of those like tacky looking gift stores all around Orlando and the Disney property. They are everywhere. However, some of them have some really cute merchandise. So I definitely think if you are trying to save some money, those souvenir shops are the way to go with Disney is extremely overpriced in some cases, whereas the cheap souvenir stores, a lot of times, if you have little kids, they don't really care. They just want that, you know, Mickey plush, or they just want the ears, whatever, but they sell them all at the off-site souvenir stores. Um, this is also great if you have to buy things for a lot of people back at home. Um, they are so much cheaper. You can get stuff. I got a really nice, like, pullover sweater. It's that, like, blue tie-dye one I wear all the time. I think it was, like, 
$12 or something at one of those souvenir stores. I love those stores and highly recommend checking them out. Tip number nine is that you might not actually need a stroller. I highly recommend not bringing a stroller if you do not need one for your child um, for a couple reasons. First of all, it's a lot to lug around. You have to find a place to park it all the time. Um, and then second of all, if your kid is running around and walking around all day in the parks, they are going to be so tired at night and just like conk out and go to bed. Um, however, if you have them sitting in a stroller and you're pushing them around all day, when you are so tired and ready to go to bed yourself, your kid is going to be flying off the wall because they didn't get that chance to run around all day. I see it all the time. These kids are so excited. These parents are so tired. But that was because they have the kid sitting in a stroller. If your kid is, I would say, above the age of six, seven, they do not need a stroller. Even six and seven year olds do not need a stroller. Um, they can walk themselves. I highly encourage you let them do so. Number 10 is to bring a rain poncho. It rains in Florida daily. I know it's the sunshine state, but there is always rain. We get a lot of humidity showers in Florida and they come like that and they go like that. But if you are stuck in the middle of one, you're going to want a rain poncho. The disposable ones that you can get at the dollar store work absolutely perfect. They can go in a backpack super easy and also they're not necessarily like use once and throw out. You can probably get like two per person and then um, you Use those just the entire vacation they fold up nice into the little bag again super easy I love those things my tip number 11 is before you leave make sure you get some sharpies and an autograph book if your children or yourself wants to get autographs from the characters Disney autograph books and pens are once again quite expensive you can get them at the dollar store before you go and this can be either just like a set of you know how you get the cue cards or recipe cards and they have like the coil to them I did that one year and I decorated it up I got to put stickers on the front it was super cute super personalized um, or you could just make your own with some sheets of paper or a blank sketchbook a little sketchbook as well would work absolutely perfect um, and it's kind of fun too to have your kids decorate them if they wanted to or you can decorate it personalize it how you want and it's really cute and a really good way to save a lot of money on Disney stuff and my final tip number 12 is that if anything goes wrong on your vacation Disney will try their best to fix it we want to make the guests at Disney as happy as possible if you are having any sort of issue whether it be with your hotel if you're staying on site or in the parks just go to the guest relations or the front desk at the hotel and they will try to fix it for you as best as possible a lot of times they will honestly give you extra fast passes or something as well this being said don't complain about everything but if there is some sort of major issue maybe your luggage is delayed maybe something very traumatic happened to you in the parks anything like that go up be nice about it no one wants a rude yelling guest in their face but if you go up be like listen this happened I was just wondering if there's anything you could do to kind of help us out um, or if you just want to make some sort of complaint please do it nicely um, but chances are also the nicer you are the more willing they are going to be and the more extra stuff they will do to fix it but I guarantee Disney will try to fix it in some way or another. So this has been my 12 Disney tips for first timers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am posting daily videos now, so make sure you come back every day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope you have a magical rest of your day.